an American or you're from a Western nation and you're coming and the and you're coming and you're bringing a lot of wealth with you into this country. So I think it's important for us as we, regardless of what we choose to do, whether we decide to go on into global health or we decide to go into community health or if you just want to volunteer or do something on the side, it's important to to put the community that you're serving before yourself. So. And I think that that requires us to make a lot of hard choices about whether we decide that we want to take on a leadership role in, say, working with a community or an indigenous population or any sort of situation in which we work. Do we really feel that coming into a situation with very little experience that we're qualified and that we're able to take on a leadership role almost immediately from jump? I think it's something that that I personally have been grappling with and I think it's something that a lot of people should should heavily consider when they decide to go into the global health field. Thank you. Uh, that reminds me of a, a, a model in public health, global public health work uh, called community participatory research or practice and that is going into a community and not assuming that you know any everything and anything about what's happening or what should be implemented or bringing your Western ideas or wherever your ideas come from or stem from into these spaces that it may not apply or it may not work. So one of the things that we do as Global Health leaders is to work with the community and we do that at Global Health just by virtue of pairing our fellows with national and international fellows. So they work together as a cohesive unit so that we represent, or they represent rather, two different sides of the coin so they can attack these complex problems in what I think are really innovative ways. So I'm gonna ask one more question before I open up the floor for questions. And you all represent different levels of the professional realm that we have uh, students and mid and senior level professionals here on this panel and I just want to ask you all to share with us today what would you tell yourself um, when you first started considering global health as a profession and what advice would you give your younger self who didn't who doesn't know as much about the global health space <laughs> I see smiles so I think this is gonna be good so let me you want to kick us off yeah so um I would say the thing that I would tell my younger self is when you matriculate into any field, regardless if it's international development, whether it's medicine, whether it's global health, there's always going to be challenges, there's always going to be oppositions, there's always going to be someone that's going to tell you that you, whatever your dream is, that you're never ever going to be able to achieve it. Um, I would say my younger self at one point, when I was an undergrad, just going through a lot of different stuff here at Howard, I would say part of me believed it, but when I thought about the grand scheme of things, I was just like, regardless of what anyone say, whatever you put your mind to, I firmly believe you can achieve it. Um, what I would say about right now where I'm at in my career, um, I would say prior to being a Global Health Corps Fellow, I was trying for four years to transition into the global health sphere. Um, very well versed in global health issues, lived abroad, done work with my family abroad back in the community that they grew up, um, my parents grew up in, in Jamaica. But I would say for a lot of people, for some employers, that wasn't enough. Um, so for me, I was very determined. I definitely knew what I wanted to do. But I also am a big believer in things work out in its perfect timing, or as my grandmother would say, everything in God's time. So I believe where I'm at now, um, it was definitely the right time, and that's where I am why I was able to get to where I am now, but I would say at the end of the day, whatever it is that you want to do, I would say stick to your dreams, don't give up on it, regardless if it seems impossible, regardless if it seems like you're in the midst of opposition and you'll never be able to achieve it, I would say definitely stick with it because in its right timing, everything will work out and fall into the place where it's supposed to be. Thank you. Okay, um, so, I would tell my younger self to go to therapy. Um, go talk to a professional, air out some of your grievances from the past, um, talk about your parents' divorce, talk about why you want to be a, a do-gooder, why do you have this complex where you want to be Malcolm X, um, why, why are you drawn to this work? Um, I think 
doing that, talking to a professional, not just a friend, but someone who doesn't have that, that same context, who doesn't share that same history with you. So you actually have to give them that context. You really have to talk about some things, you really have to go deep. Um, and being able to, when you're coming out of that, be able to write a list of, these are my values. This is what I, I hold to be important. These are the things I'm trying to work on. Um, because the higher you go, and the, and the more you progress in your career, what's gonna happen is those things that you haven't addressed will rear their heads when you least expect it. And so you'll be in a room with some top notch, top brass people, and all that stuff is gonna start coming. And you're gonna have this imposter syndrome, like I don't belong here, I don't belong here. Wait, I'm not good enough to be here. So I would say old Steve or, or very young Steve, go, go to therapy, talk about your life, talk about what drives you, talk about your motives, talk about your agendas. So when you're going out there doing that work, you don't have that savior complex. You're doing it with a clean heart. You're doing it because you know why you're doing it. You found your purpose and you've actually articulated that purpose um, to someone other than just like inside of your head. Um, what was the other part of the question? That's okay. it. Okay, that was good. All right. I don't think you've answered sufficiently. Cameron, you want to weigh in? I would, I would definitely echo, echo that. It's, I think a lot of us go into college, and I know I wasn't pushed in to go into medical school, but I probably, probably nudged into going to med school. So I came in in biology by default, and I, health, health education was something I picked up later. But I think it's important for us all, this is the opportunity now to discover what we're really, really, really passionate about. So I would tell younger Cameron, I'm happy, I'm happy with the choices that I made, but I would tell him, explore some other options. You never know what's gonna strike your interest. And it's possible to do health in, in any capacity. You don't have to be a biology major, you don't have to go to med school be an engineer, you can be a business major, you can have all these different directions and still have a health focus. So I would tell them to, to explore. Even if you come back to what you originally planned on doing, at least you have a broader perspective. But I think I, I, I haven't even started my career, so take all of what I say with a grain of salt, so don't listen to me. Just think about it. I think you should listen to him. I think that's a really uh, poignant point. Uh, at Global Health, we want to recruit all types of professionals. We even have a strategic development goal of recruiting more non-traditional fellows. And the, and the work that we do, we attack uh, these complex problems in Global Health from multiple perspectives. We have architects, we have engineers, we have people doing work, uh, business, finance, uh, Accountants, we have so, such a range of professionals, and I, I think that your point stands really strong that whatever your goal is, you can attack it or, or reach it, rather, from many different <coughs> perspectives. My mother, I'm Nigerian, my mother loves Proverbs, um, especially when you don't particularly want to hear it. But, but she says, one of the things that stuck to me, she said, um, many roads lead to the market, so whatever your goal is, you can get there from many different ways. So I really love your point, and I definitely uh, piggybacked on that a little bit. I would say just really quickly, um, what I would tell my younger self is to network, to get out and ask questions. You cannot know everything from Googling and you know reading books. You have to ask people who have that lived experience, who have done it, who have succeeded. And you never know, like that passion that you have, that interest, even if it's just an interest, uh, it might show through really strong and people will invest in you, invest in your development. So uh, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. That's what I would tell my younger self. So before we open the floor for questioning, I just wanted to do my last GHC plug and say that, you know, applications are open for the 2017-2018 uh, fellowship. Uh, you can go to www.ghcore.org backslash apply. Uh, we're looking for people just like you, uh, people who are interested in global health and being leaders for the future. And we would, I would really encourage you to apply. We have positions in, we have positions in Malawi, Rwanda, Uganda, Zambia, and the United States. 
And we would really love to provide an entry point uh, for you to enter the global health arena. As Elenice said, it is challenging. It's a pretty tight-knit community, but it's so possible even if you don't elect to apply. So I just want to encourage you all to uh, give us a chance and open yourselves up to a new possibility. And so, I'm, I'm sorry. Joe, go ahead. Um, just like another plug, um, GHC, Global Health Core, um, really changed my life, um, really changed my trajectory, really propelled me forward. Um, before GHC, I was just a, uh, I had a master's degree and I was living in my mom's basement in Fredericksburg, Virginia, um, just kind of wanting to do something. I had a passport, but I wanted to go somewhere. Um, and GHC afforded me the opportunity just to go one hour north and be in, in the Chocolate City and do the work and then allowed me to travel in different places around the world. And so where I am now in my career, I really owe it to GHC. So. Thank you for that. So I want to open up the floor for questions for our panelists. Um, does anyone have any inquiries that they'd like to know, any uh, areas that we may not have covered or discussed? Thank you. Feel free to walk up to the mic if you have a question. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So hello. I think I can project so everyone can hear me. Um, so my question is about your experience here at Howard University and how that has prepared you for being in the